So it's mere weeks till the end of 2022 and you, yes you, haven't stuck to your reading goals, not even close. But never fear, there are many ways to skin a cat and you can skin the whole cat in the last month or skin one poor a month, the outcome's the same. Where has this metaphor gone? My name's Lena, I love to read, I love to talk about reading. I know a lot of you have been missing me talking about reading on this channel, so today I'm here to say if you're procrastinating and give you 10 books you can read in a day in a day. Now the ever accelerating need for visual stimulus is not lost on me, so don't worry. I'm not just gonna be sitting here telling you about the books. For every book that I recommend to you, I am going to put on a jumper. 33% for your entertainment, 33% because I aspire to be Joey from Friends, and 33% because it's really freaking freezing in this conservatory. Let's get into the books. Now for those of you new to being a straggler at the back of the pack of the reading race, this might be news to you, but for us old timers who find ourselves here in December every year, may I present to you the magic of the graphic novel. Even if you haven't really read graphic novels the rest of the year, even if it's not really your genre, December is a great time to experiment with the rich tapestry of graphic novels out there. You might be somebody who's against superheroes, you might not be tickled and tantalised by manga, don't worry, neither am I, and I can say that with my whole chest, but I do really love graphic novels and it's because I was introduced to the literary side of graphic novels and how in-depth and great they can be. As Mr Wormwood said, a picture paints a thousand words, and as an example, I wanted to show you one of my favourite graphic novels of all time. This is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. It's a sharp, intelligent, at times funny, but also incredibly tragic look at survivor's guilt and the effects the Holocaust had on future Jewish communities. It's told through the allegory of cats and mice, and it's absolutely heartbreakingly beautiful and also bonus this the complete mouse that you're looking at right now is actually two books so if you read the whole of this that's two in one before i tell you about number two i must put on my second jumper yes this counts as the first jumper it's not being a naysayer it's christmas this is knit god damn you the second is the wife by meg Walitza. at 212 pages it's more of the more ambitious books on this list but i'm putting it here purely because one i think it's one of the best novels ever so even if you don't quite finish it in a day, you won't regret it. I read it in one sitting because the plot is so compelling. Sometimes it's not really about the length, it's about the plot. And it's about a famous author and his wife who are on a plane 35,000 feet above the water on the way for the writer to collect what is the equivalent of the Nobel Prize. Meanwhile, his wife who's sitting next to him is deciding to divorce him. And as the novel goes on, you realise why. And oh, is it a big twist? <laughs> if you like Taylor Jenkins' read, or even if you thought you might like Taylor Jenkins' read and then you read it and it wasn't quite what you were thinking of, I think who you're looking for is Meg Willitza. It's Meg Willitza. It's always been Meg Willitza. Next jumper. I'm already feeling a bit bulky. <laughs> this might not go well. If you are poetically evasive and you are scared by the idea of poetry and you're not really sure where to start, I cannot recommend enough Brand New Ancients by Kay Tempest. It's a mix of soapbox polemic about why we have stopped as humans treating ourselves as sacred and a small contained little story about a few tragic characters. It's incredibly easy to understand and even better it's 45 minutes in audio and they read it and they're amazing at reading it and there's music. I've read it more than five times now and it only gets better. Next jumper, next book. My mum knitted this one. <laughs> I'm doing up the buttons like it matters that they're mismatched and I'm not about to cover them over in about two seconds. If you are not poetry averse and you're ready for a little bit more poetry in your life, can I suggest you Morgan Parker's There Are More Beautiful Things Than Beyonce. This book sells itself so I'm just going to read you the first line of the blurb. The only thing more beautiful than Beyonce is God. And God is a black woman sipping rosé and drawing a lavender bath, texting her mum, belly laughing in the therapist's office, feeling unloved, being on display play daring to survive. Morgan Parker, one poetry, we could all go home. Believe it or not, I'm actually starting to be the right temperature. That's how cold it is in this country. This is truly a reading tag for the cost of living crisis. Am I right? <laughs> the other poetry collection I wanted to tell you about is The Perseverance by Raymond Antrobus. Raymond Antrobus is a Jamaican-British writer who also writes about the deaf experience and this is one of his most incredible collections, particularly the title poem, The Perseverance, which is 
symbolic is talking about the perseverance and his dad being an alcoholic but also about the pub his dad frequented which was called the perseverance it is rip your guts out beautiful and you will read it in one sitting i'm starting to need a dresser i need an assistant if you're like lena my brain is asleep i'm not ready to take on poetry for an hour what else have you got for me i'm gonna raise you children's fiction yes it counts don't even don't don't Oh, Anne Fine smashing children's fiction before it was cool. 1989, she comes out with this goggle eyes. One of the most rip roaring, hilarious books that I have ever read, told from the perspective of an incredibly precocious little kid called Kitty who hates her stepdad, who likes to eat meat and doesn't care about the environment. And she is a very staunch, outspoken environmental activist. <laughs> I'm, kid I'm not kidding. This is this is one of the biggest books of the 90s. Or it should have been. No, it did win the Carnegie Medal and the Guardian Children's Fiction Award. Why has it fallen out of public consciousness? It's a travesty. It's so funny, so lighthearted, so good. And if it's about changing your mind, chosen family, and I think I might read it again after recording this video. Time for the pom poms. I'm still not too hot, you know. I'm I'm about I'm a good temperature. But excuse me, sir, mum, do, do you do you have a moment to hear about plays? Thought the reading plays alone in your living room is just for uncool drama kids you're right but at the 11th hour when you haven't finished your reading goals who are you to get cocky join us here in the gutter it's cool this is phoebe waller bridge's fleabag if you've watched the tv show but it's been a while it's so much fun to read the playback and imagine all the different ways it could be performed but this is also just a call for picking up a play they're really fast to read you get a lot more richness of imagination if you let loose a little bit and give yourself a little bit of quiet time to imagine how it would be staged or how it might look because with plays there aren't that many descriptors they don't tell you how everything looks or how everything goes down and that's one of the reasons I love reading plays because they're a bit more of a creative collaboration. If it's not Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I've also really enjoyed an Owen Shears play this year called Pink Mist and I'll leave some more suggestions in the description for good plays to read but this feels like an easy win, okay? The temperature is creeping up a little bit now, I will admit. <laughs> okay, it looks like somebody shrunk my head. This one's a bit of a weird one and I want to arrogantly bet that you haven't heard about it unless you've heard me talk about it in the past. Important artifacts and personal property from the collection of Lenore Do Nolan and Harold Morris, including books, street fashion, and jewellery. This is a novel disguised as an auction catalogue. It is imagining that two people are auctioning off every little inconsequential artifact from their whole relationship, and the story is told in the descriptions of the items. If you read it, chronologically you can put the story of their relationship together and work out how it ended but obviously from the format alone you can tell that this would not take long to read because it's literally a catalogue of pictures with two line descriptions why aren't there more books like this out there and if there are could you let me know something off the wall something a bit weird because i need more of this in my life less of the rich people getting divorced in their living rooms kind of fiction more of this please penultimately this book is a stand-in for me recommending the whole series uh, but this is austin cleon's artistic pep talks this is his second one his first one was called steal like an artist this one's called show your work and he's a third one called keep going they're illustrated guides to creating what you love betting on yourself and keeping going and they're not only well written and really affirming they also have pages that just have diagrams like this on them so they're perfect for a challenge like this okay this is the final jumper <laughs> i'm going in <laughs> oh no i'm starting to think that i might have in a very real way made an error okay there's just no way this is gonna go this challenge if you think about it has turned out exactly like my reading goals 95 percent of the way there but still doesn't cut it <laughs> i actually can't hear because there's so much knitwear around my orifices. Okay. <laughs> okay, the final book, because I'm nothing if I don't follow my own advice and back myself, is Bargain Bin Rom-Com by none other than your local poet next door. Lena Norse. If you're new here, you might not know that I released a poetry collection this year. I also illustrated it myself because I have control issues and I'm determined to make the fact that I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, into a career. If you like a giggle, 
if you like some of my left wing views and you want to play with them more, or if you would like to read the poem that three people in counting have had read out as in their wedding ceremony called In the Event of Zombies, then you might like this collection. According to people on Goodreads, and yes, I do read my Goodreads reviews because I am that kind of petty author. It's really good if you haven't tried poetry before and you'd like to. I wrote the collection kind of with that in mind. And if you've bought it and enjoyed it, one, thank you so much. You did not need to do that. But if you did like it, it's Christmas. Buy one for a friend. You only live once, buy your friend's poetry, read what you like, and wear all of your knitwear. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I reckon you might like one of these. This video and all the videos on this channel have been made possible by the ever patient and optimistic Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. Good luck, Godspeed, fair winds on your reading goals, and I'll see you in my next one, Frog Snog Out. <coughs> Wake up. Okay, we gotta lean back and then forward. <coughs>